Kathleen, thank you. Looking ahead now, a computer technology company could be investing millions to build a new campus in Nashville and bring thousands of high-paying jobs to the city. Austin-based Oracle is proposing a $1.2 billion investment to build a 60-acre campus in the River North area along the Cumberland River. The company says its plan would bring along 8,500 jobs to Music City with an average salary of $110,000. Oracle's proposal also includes $175 million to cover all of the city's infrastructure costs. Now, if approved, the campus will be located along the Cumberland River's East Bank and will include a pedestrian bridge like the one we have downtown. This one would connect the campus to Germantown, retail space, a riverfront park, greenway and utility work. But of course, all of this still has to be approved in a series of tweets supporting the proposal to build a Nashville campus. Mayor John Cooper wrote, quote, we are thrilled that Oracle is ready to make a billion dollar bet on Nashville. Oracle will bring a record number of high paying jobs to Nashville, and then the pay will upfront all of the city's infrastructure costs. This is a huge win for our city. If approved, Oracle would join other tech companies like NTT Data and Amazon in making the move to Nashville. New tonight, he served two years for killing someone. Now police say he's already on the streets for stabbing someone inside a busy grocery store. Fox 17 News found that is not all of Fesnado Santos's criminal history. Fox 17 News Jackie Del Pilar live tonight downtown asking the DA why this man is free to walk the streets. This is a list of the suspect's criminal history. It dates all the way back to 2002, including violent offenses. I found out in addition to yesterday's arrest, he was also arrested the day before that for disorderly conduct and other charges. A trip to the grocery store ending in chaos. Police say Fesnando Santos stabbed someone at the Inglewood Kroger Tuesday afternoon. A frightening scene for shoppers. Screaming and kicking. They finally get him in the car. He's sitting there trying to kick out the windows, threatening to kill everybody standing around watching. This isn't the first stabbing arrest for Santos. He was convicted of stabbing and killing a man in a motel parking lot in 2017 and sentenced to two years in jail. I reached out to the district attorney's office to find out why just two years. The DA's office tells me surveillance video showed Santos and the victim getting into a mutual fight before Santos dealt the deadly stab. Santos claimed self-defense and pled guilty to a lesser charge of reckless homicide. The DA's office says the victim's family agreed to it because they didn't want to risk Santos getting acquitted by a jury. He was released from jail the same day of his sentencing in 2019 after spending two years awaiting trial. Two years for murdering someone? Uh, that doesn't even make sense. Verna Wyatt is a co-founder of Tennessee Voices for Victims. She says the justice system needs to take a closer look at people's criminal history before sentencing, especially if they have a violent past. So do you think harsher sentences could help prevent things like this? I don't necessarily think harsher sentences, but I think uh, sensible sentencing where you look at the past history of the individual and then make a determine about just public safety for one thing. I asked the DA's office why Santos's criminal history didn't result in a harsher penalty and whether more jail time could have helped prevent this latest stabbing. I'm waiting to hear back. Police say the victim from yesterday's stabbing is expected to be okay. New tonight, Fox 17 News is digging for answers after police say a man killed his estranged wife and her mother before killing himself this week. His wife had an order of protection against him and had gone through the steps to keep herself safe, but it just was not enough. Fox 17 News' Kathleen Jacob pushing for answers tonight to prevent this from happening to another woman. It's a heartbreaking situation that spanned all the way from Lebanon here to Nashville. This woman took steps to protect herself, but some say closing loopholes could have made a difference. The murder of a mother and daughter, police say at the hands of an estranged husband. Police say 36 year old Sean Varsos took the lives of his wife Marie and his mother in law Deborah Sisko before killing himself. She followed the police advice. She did everything right. And this is just a tragedy that 
you know, I just don't even, I, I don't even know what to say. Attorney Carla Miller and her partner Rachel Upshaw worked with Marie to file for divorce and then eventually file for an order of protection after a domestic violence event. She says the next step is a hearing where the person must execute an affidavit promising to turn over their firearms. Did he get to the point yet where he would have to turn over his weapons and, and sign that affidavit? Was had Did he do that? His attorney, as I understand it, did represent to the court that day that he had been advised that Mr. Varzos had indeed, um, in fact, dispossessed himself of his firearms and had given them to his family. But she says a loophole with this is there's not a system in place to make sure they follow through. I'm not aware of any follow-up mechanism in our statute regarding whether that person has executed that affidavit, mm. whether they actually followed through with the promise they made in the affidavit and actually turned their weapons over. I reached out to Lebanon police to see what else can be done in this regard. Is there any way um, that that these people, that people are keeping an eye on them um, who have protection orders out against them. Lebanon police haven't responded, but Whitney Blanton with the Metro Office of Family Safety says 80% of the time the orders do work. This is the opportunity for a victim to step up and get the system involved to, to get help. And then the secret is out and that takes a lot of the power away and it makes the order protection very effective. Urging people to keep coming forward even after tragedies like this happen. It's important to note that getting an order of protection is free and if you need help we have links on our website fox17.com to resources that can help assist you in this process.